I'm hoping that I can get top side of 120 yards with a 120 pound setup. common misconception in carp fishing that you have to spend a lot of money to hit extreme distances when you're casting and that's not necessarily the case I mean yeah if you want to hit 160 170 200 yards then you probably do want to spend that top buck to get those rods with a super super fast recovery tip speed the reels with the mega mega slow uh, oscillation and the line that's going to do the job but that's not always the case you can hit very very long distances on a budget conscious setup like this this is the C-Series rod in 12 foot, three and a half pound test. Now the good thing about this rod is the Minima style guides. These are Prologix MM series guides and they are super lightweight because they don't have the ceramic in the, uh, in the guides as you can see there. So what that does, that saves a lot of weight up at that tip end. So that means the tip recovery speed of this rod will be a lot quicker than a rod with ceramic guides. So when you cast out, it will just straighten that much quicker than another rod that's slightly heavier at the top end that might be a bit more floppy. And that makes a big difference, not just to casting distances, but to accuracy as well. So that's a huge point to consider. This reel here is the 8000 Avenger reel from ProLogic. And the line there on this is absolutely fantastic. It's a big spool reel. We do them in 7000 and 8000. This is the 8000. I just wanted to kind of bulk this up. And all in all, this setup will set you back about 120 pounds, probably a bit less. It's not just the rod and reel that's important for distance casting. You need to get your line and your lead size right. So at the minute, I've got density 12 pound on this reel. Um, it's 0.30 diameter, so it's quite thin for a 12 pound line. So what I've actually done is I've got an 18 pound shock leader just to take that initial hit. Um, and the lead I've got on at the minute is a three. I think it's probably a bit too light at the minute, but what we can do is we can have a few casts and then step it up to something a little bit heavier. So it's just vitally important just to make sure the line's running through nice and smoothly. I always wet the line, wet all the eyes, and wet the spool. I just find that reduces friction and lessens the chance of a crack off or anything catching around and frapping up on the first eye. Right, first of all, what I do is I make sure that leader knot's at the bottom of the spool so it can't catch on those first few casts. And then I like the lead somewhere between that second eye and the spigot. And that's about perfect. Take the bail arm off. I always do that just to make sure it's not frapped around the tip. Put the lead down so it's just off the floor. Check again just to make sure it's not frapped up as you turn around. Drop it down and I straighten this right arm. And then the left arm I'm going to pull down into me on the cast. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean most of my weight backwards. I'm going to take my left foot off and as I step forward and stamp I'm going to hit it. So. Let's see how far we can get. That seems like a fair distance. I'll stop that just before it hit the surface. Put it in the clip. And let's see how far that was. Thirty, so that's already 120 yards. 31, 2, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 39 and a bit wraps. Do you know what? I never thought it'd go that far, to be honest with you. So what's that? What's 39 and a bit? So yeah, so. That's about 156 yards, 157 yards. Wow, I'm really impressed with that. Well, I'm honestly blown away with how far that cast went. I never expected it to go 150 something yards. I was expecting 120, 130. That's why we tarped the video 120 yards for 120 pounds. So for it to go that far on that, that first cast is, is very, very interesting. Um, but it's worth talking about lead sizes. Now I've started with a three ounce lead. I thought that would be a little bit lightweight um, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe a three and a half might be perfect for that rod, but it's always worth trying to balance your setup um, with 
the rods and the lead sizes that you're using. Now the rods I use for a lot of my own fishing are the Inspire 13 foot 3 and 3 quarters. Now they're quite a fast, fast action rod, they've still got a nice uh, playing action for when I get a fish even close in on, on braid or fluorocarbon, um, but they've got a backbone to put a lead a very, very long way. And that's why I think something like a, a big four and a half ounce or maybe even a five ounce is optimum for that rod and my casting style. Um, I've, I've used four ounces on them quite a lot and I always find that I get further with a four and a half. Um, and that's probably due to, due to my casting style because I always find that when you hit a four and a half or a five ounce lead, they stay hit. It's like a freight train, just, just, just flying, it just goes. So if you've got a crosswind or you're casting past an island or you've got to cast past a, a bit of a bank to get to where you want to be, I always find a heavier lead is a lot easier, especially when you hit that clip to get that line straight, straight away. Um, but a lot of the distance casters swear by a four ounce lead because you can get faster uh, speed through the air with a four ounce lead. And if you're quite a punchy caster, you know, quite a, like a boxer, like fast twitch muscles, then maybe a four ounce lead might suit you. But I use my height um, and a slow build up of power in order to get the, the distance that I get. So it's always worth messing around with lead sizes and lead shapes as well. Um, so because the C-Series rod is a more cost effective rod than say the Inspire rod, the top end rod, um, the carbon in, in the C-Series isn't as, uh, as high quality. Well, it can't be because you, you can't sell a, a, a top quality high carbon rod for 50 pounds. It's just not going to happen. Um, so you've got to temper the lead size in order to deal with that. So I've used a three and got some very, very long distances with a three, but I've got the feeling a three and a half might suit that rod perfectly. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a three and a half on there first. But it's worth talking about lead shapes. Um, so this sort of shape is what's called a casting lead. And I think this is what the tournament um, casters use uh, to hit distances with. Uh, and as you can see, it's like a, it doesn't look that aerodynamic, but it's like a, a raindrop. And you know, a raindrop is supposed to be one of the most aerodynamic shapes. And that's what the tournament casters use to, to get their distance. But I must prefer this zip style lead. As you can see, it looks a bit more aerodynamic. Whether it is or not, I don't know, but I can certainly get more distance with that than I can that, even though the weights are the same. Now, I've heard a theory that the distance casters will say that uh, these zip style leads don't tend to go through the air too true. They tend to give a bit of wobble, but I haven't found that true in practice at all when I'm, I'm casting rigs out there. And I think why that is, I think the, the rig almost gives a, a tail to it, like a tail on a kite and stabilizes that lead through the air. So I'll always go for a zip style lead over a, a tournament sort of casting style lead. Um, and being as we're talking about casting on a budget, it's always worth looking around for some independent lead dealers. I mean, the, this one here is, is, is done by Seven Valley Leads. And I tell you what, every lead I've got off these guys, it's really, really smooth. There's no lumps, there's no bumps, there's no imperforations, because all it will take is a little bit of a bend or a little bit of a dip in, in one side of the lead, and you're gonna lose that, that straight cast, or you're gonna lose that distance. So having a perfectly symmetrical lead is very important with getting the optimum distance. Right now I've got a three and a half ounce lead on this so I'm going to see how far this can go. I've just wet the spool, wet the eyes as normal, bring it up to just above the spigot, check see if that spool's locked off, that's quite important as well. The last thing you want is that spool to slip, which is even more so if you're using braid and a four, four and a half ounce lead. You see I'm almost paranoid about just checking see if the line's flowing through those eyes cleanly. The last thing you want is a, is a crack off, even though I've not got a rig on. So lead virtually on the floor, lean back, and I'm just gonna step forward. There's two ways to do it. I can either lean, or I can just take a step. I find taking a step just gives me that extra bit of distance. Just hit the clip that did. Um, so there doesn't seem to be a great deal of difference between the three and a half and the three. So it's, um, it's quite interesting. I thought the three and a half would actually go further than the three, but it seems that this rod is sort of married up somewhere between the two. Um, in fact, maybe the three might just go a little bit further on it, but we won't do any more casts with this one. What we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll get the 13 foot version on and uh, see how far I can get with that. If you do want to get those few extra yards, it always pays to wade out a little bit. Well, now I've got the 13 foot rod on here and uh, I've coupled it with a three and a half ounce lead. You know, the jury's still out whether the 12 foot's better with the three or three and a half. I think for fishing purposes, I think I'd use it with a three and a half. 
just so I can tighten that line a little bit better uh, without risk of moving that lead. Plus as well, when it hits the clip as well, it's, it's, you're gonna get less of a bow with a crosswind. So for me, the 12 foot rod is a three and a half. So let's see what this 13 will do. So I can't do the cast I was demonstrating earlier where I take that big stride. One, because there's a bit of a drop off here and I don't wanna go in any further. And two, you don't really gain a lot because I'm threshing around in the water. So all I'm gonna do is, well, you can't quite see, but I'm gonna lift my foot off the floor. So just my heels touching and then it's gonna go flat. So I'm gonna use that rather than the stride. I think the stride gets you a couple of extra yards, but like I say, you can't always do it in every scenario. But the most important thing is the lean. So I can actually get my lead down. So it's just touching the water, arm straight, and I'm gonna hit it. That went about the same as the 12s, but the problem was I couldn't get the lead as low because I'm in the water. So I need to readjust. I need to readjust basically the drop on my lead. Um, it was down to the spig at that time, more or less. I probably need it down to that second eye just so I've got a bit more of an arc because that's essentially what we're doing here. We're trying to create um, a big arc and I'm six foot four tall and that, that really helps being tall. Um, and I always find a 13 foot rod, because it's longer, you get an extra foot up there, so that's an extra foot of tip speed you can generate. Um, and obviously the lower you can get the lead to the floor, the more of an arc you can move in. So therefore, the faster it should be moving on point of release. So I'm gonna drop that a little bit. And it's, there is a degree of getting used to the rod, because I've not cast these 13 footers before. But even though the rods I use in my own fishing 13 foot, but it's a, it's a slightly different action. So when you're wading out, there's always that optimum distance between how far you go out and how much you lose with the drop of the lead. Because the further you go out, if you went out to your waist, you wouldn't have that much of a room to drop the rod down there, so you wouldn't correct that arc. And the whole thing about the 13 foot rods is, because it's a foot longer, it's a foot longer when you get to there, so that means a foot of extra tip speed that you can generate. But the more you wade out, the more you're going to lose that because you're not going to be able to bring it from so far back. So last time I went a little bit too low on the drop, I went down to the spigot. So this time I'm going to go around to about the second eye and see if that makes a difference. So that's about right there. Check see if it's not frapped over. And let's give it a bang. That's my furthest cast yet. So that properly smashed into the clip. So I've got that one bang right. I've probably waded back an extra 18 inches um, and the, the, the lead was literally just touching the water then as I hit it. So that would have gone 160-ish, probably a little bit further. So yeah, really happy with that. Um, you know, it's really worth playing around with rod sizes to, to see what suits you. 13 foot rods have always suited me a little bit better. One, I can use heavier leads, which is better for my type of fishing. You can get a straighter line. Uh, the last thing you want is a big bow in the line going all the way around there if it's a really weedy lake because you end up with such a bow so your bite indication is pretty poor, um, which isn't great if you, like I say, you are fishing a weedy lake because it gives that fisher more of a chance to, to find a weed bed and get itself into sanctuary. Um, plus as well, plus as well, I like the, um, the playing action of 13s because it's a three and a half test rod, same as a 12, but that three and a half test tends to be over a longer distance. So the action of 13s tends to be a little bit better than a 12 I always find if, if, if the rods are rated as the same test curve. Um, and I already feel that this rod's got a bit more backbone than the, the 12 foot. So if it was me and casting, I think I'd go for this 13, but other people might not be used to 13s. I know I speak to a lot of people at shows and one thing or another that just, just can't get used to an idea of a, um, a 13 foot rod. But, I kind of like that with a three and a half ounce lead, but I am just going to try it with a four ounce lead just to see if that makes a difference. It, I don't think I'd gain anything with a three, unlike the 12. This seems like a, a more of a um, faster action rod than the 12. So I'm going to stick a four ounce lead on and see if that makes any difference. Right, we're back on the bank again, just so I can uh, get that slightly bigger drop that I talked about, slightly bigger arc. I've put on the four ounce lead. Like I have not cast with a 13 before, so I've got with a four ounce, so I've got no idea 
what's going to happen. So last time, all I was doing is I was leaning back when I was in the water, so my heel was on the floor, and I was just closing the heel and moving body weight. Now I'm going to try and step into this and see what happens. Right, arm straight, concentrate on pulling down, move body weight. <laughs> that properly smashed the clip before it went. That, that would have gone well over 160 yards, so I'm really, really impressed on what we can do on a budget. The 13 foot rod is slightly more expensive than the 12, but for that extra 10, 15 pounds, I think it's well worth it. And this goes to prove that you can get really extreme distances on a budget kit. So 120 yards, or a lot more than 120 yards, should I say, for 120 pounds. But I suppose when you start looking at things a little bit more, at the minute we're on the back of a wind in a big pit, if that wind uh, would stop completely, I'd probably lose 10 yards. It's not a big wind, it's only slightly under wind. I'd probably lose 10 yards. If it cut across me or come into me, I'd probably lose another 20 yards on top of that. If I was to put a rig on, I'd probably lose another 20 yards still. So I feel I can fish comfortably with this setup or even the 12 foot setup uh, at 120 yards without any issues at all for 120 pounds.